You found Paw Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue, and I'm Paw Daddy, and today we'll be looking at the Magic Seal MS400 vacuum sealer. Now, this is an external premium vacuum sealer that does it all. All right, this is my MS400 that I bought and paid for with my own money. This is not a sponsored video, and any opinions given are mine and mine alone. So I'll show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, if there is any. One of the biggest selling points about this machine is that you can use the textured bags as well as the smooth bags, including Mylar and aluminum foil bags. The MS400 has 250 watts of power, and that seems to be a lot for external vacuum sealers. Now, it has two vacuum pumps. Yes, you have two separate vacuum pumps in this unit. There's some built-in liquid protection, plus it comes with a liquid catch container for sealing wet items. The sealing strip is 40 centimeters long. Now, that's 15.7 inches long, and it's a whopping eight millimeters wide. That is double the width of a lot of competing models. Now, the MS400 can be set up for air inflation, and this would be for food items that you don't want to crush like chips, breads, or cookies. And the Magic Seal MS400 works in automatic and manual modes. Now, there's a bag cutter on top, but one thing that it doesn't have is a bag storage area. Now, I'm used to having storage on my old food saver. I like having a storage area, but this is not a deal breaker to me. So all these extra features take up a lot of space, so I guess the storage had to go. To get a good handle on understanding this unit, you need to know that it has two units in one. Now, the first mode is called the chamber mode, and this is exclusively for the textured slash emboss bags. Now, it works like a conventional vacuum sealer, and you open it up by pressing the buttons on the side and lifting up. To be in the chamber mode, you have to have this removable vacuum chamber in place. So let's slide that in, just drops in. As you can see, the green light lit up for the chamber mode. Okay, I've got a textured bag with my Bucky's chapstick already in it. So this works just like most external vacuum sealers. You just open the lid and then you place your textured bag across this vacuum chamber and then you gotta close the lid and it snaps in place on both sides. You want to have the bag flattened out as much as possible. So remember that strip that we just put in there, they call the vacuum chamber. So that's what they named it, not me. Okay, now that we got the bag set up in, in place, we're gonna do this in auto mode and I'm gonna hit the auto button. The vacuum will start. You can see it's pulling vacuum. Okay, and now the seal time countdown timer starts counting down. So you have some control over this because you can set this anywhere from between one and 15 seconds. The vacuum you cannot control in the auto mode, but you do have the option of doing it in manual. And then to release, we need to push down while pushing the buttons in. And that comes up and hopefully you can see that we've got a very, very wide, nice seal across this bag. And maybe you notice when the process completed, we also had an audible beep to let you know that it's done. The vacuum timer's inactive while it's in the chamber mode, but you can control it by the start stop button if you're doing it manually. All right, all smooth sided flat bags should be used in the nozzle mode. So we want to open the lid and then we remove the vacuum chamber, the removable vacuum chamber. And if you noticed, the mode changed up here, the green light lit up on the nozzle mode. So we know we're in the nozzle mode because of the indicator light. Now, the next thing we can do is press the nozzle button. And guess what that does? It extends the nozzle. So we'll give that a press and now comes the nozzle. We're gonna place our smooth bag over the extended nozzle and we're gonna center it and put the mouth of the bag over the channel. Okay, in the nozzle mode, you can change your vacuum time between one and 60 seconds. Okay, in the nozzle mode, one important part that you need to remember is to slide the product up to the front of the bag before you start. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna hold that in place. Hit the auto button. Countdown timer starts on the vacuum. Now 
Now the nozzle withdraws as it finishes up and then the sealing starts and it's counting down the timer, count down the timer on the sealer. You get the beep, you know you're done. Press down on the lid, press the buttons in at the same time. And there you go, you got your product all sealed up. And once again, you got a very, very wide seal across the top. That's for all smooth-sided bags in the nozzle mode. Now I'm gonna use a Ziploc brand freezer bag and I'm gonna seal it up. Now, you could cut this sealing area off so you'd have a completely smooth bag, but I found that that's not necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and load the bag and I'm gonna keep it sealed, this seal strip snapped together, except for maybe a couple of fingers worth in the middle. That's where we're gonna slip the nozzle on. Also, the bag has one side that extends longer than the other, so that part's gonna be on top. Okay, so we want to get it set over this channel, just like you normally would. The, the bag should be somewhere in the middle of the channel, but you got to get this heavy strip, make sure it doesn't get in the way of your gasket. Snap that together, then get this, get your product forward. And we want to change our seal timer. We want to go down to four seconds. So the minus button. So I've got that set, the seal timer on four seconds. And then we just need to hit the auto button. Countdown timer for vacuums working. Okay, the uh, vacuum nozzle retracted and the seal timer started, the four seconds. We get the beep, press down on the lid both sides, press the buttons in. Okay, so there, you can go ahead and snap that on top if you feel better about sealing it. And you've got a very wide seal got a very wide seal and that's a normal Ziploc brand freezer bag worked like a charm didn't have to cut it didn't have to do anything other than just seal her up so this feature allowing you to seal up regular freezer bags that might be worth the price of admission for some of you Okay, keep in mind that you can also use the uh, nozzle mode in manual with the vacuum stop button that starts and stops it and the seal stop button starts and stops it here. And your uh, timer ranges, the vacuum timer is active from one to 60 seconds, you can set it on, and the seal timer from one to 15 seconds while it's in the manual mode. Okay, now I wanna go over the liquid catch container. All right, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the removable vacuum canister. Okay, so I got that in, we switch to the chamber mode. I've already mentioned briefly that this unit has some built-in liquid protection for your everyday use. And that's in the form of these little containers. They list them as filters. And they will come off. So this is just for normal, just in case, the emergency use. And of course you got two, you got one for each pump. And more specifically, the chamber mode filter is on the right. And of course the nozzle mode filter would be on the left. We've removed the filter from the right side. This is our liquid catch container. Comes with the unit. We'll take the hoses out. And all you got to do is put this lid on so it's all sealed up. You want to take two of your hoses, easy for you to say. Stick, stick one in each. You got two holes in the top, so in they go. And then all we got to do is 
All we got to do now is hook these hoses up to these vacuum ports. Okay, so this gives us maximum protection when we're doing some high moisture products. Okay, and remember that we're, when we've got the right filter out, and that's what they call this one, the right one, then that's protecting you when you're in the chamber mode. Now, if we want to switch over to the nozzle side, first thing you got to do to get in the nozzle mode is take the vacuum chamber out, the removable vacuum chamber. I'm going to unplug these. Your filter goes back in place. I'm going to remove the filter on the left side. Okay, you hook this one up just like we did on the other side. So you get the picture there. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to use a vacuum canister. Now this vacuum canister did not come with the MS-400. So I had this left over from my old food saver. Okay, we're gonna go back to the chamber mode. The removable chamber will go back into the unit. And then remove the right filter box. We're going to connect this hose to the right port and it's my right because I'm looking at the machine. Okay, once you get that hooked on to the right port, I'm going to put the lid on the uh, vacuum canister and just plug this into the port on top. I'm just going to hit the uh, vacuum stop button that starts it. And then I'll stop it with the vacuum button. I'll disconnect this. And if I cannot take this lid off, which I can't, we've got vacuum in there. Okay, you can do the same exact thing in the nozzle mode, but you would have to remove the nozzle filter and you connect the air port on the left side, the left hose port to pull your vacuum in the nozzle mode. All right, I've got one last thing to show you and that's the air inflation system. And like we said before, if you've got some delicate items that you need to inflate the bag, like cookies, bread, marshmallows, I've got some cereal in a bag I'm gonna be demonstrating with, you may wanna air up the bag. Now this works in the nozzle mode only. So we've got the vacuum chamber out. Since it's the nozzle mode, you take the left filter box off. You're going to be hooking up to the right side port, and that would be my right because I'm facing the machine. And then you've got an exhaust outlet. There's one on each side of the machine, but since we've got a very short hose and this works only on the nozzle side, then we're going to be using the one that's on the left side. So I'm going to try to extend this hose around and get hooked up on to that. So now we are indeed in the inflation mode. So I'm going to flip the machine on around. Okay, this would work best using something like a Mylar bag, a heavy duty bag, but I don't have any of those. So I'm going to sacrifice this Ziploc freezer bag. And this is just a standard one quart Ziploc freezer bag like I showed you earlier. And I'm going to reduce this seal time to three seconds on here. So we're going to see what we can do. So you got to open the lid. Extend the nozzle because we are indeed in the nozzle mode. Once again, the fat side of the bag that goes on top. Slide this over the nozzle. And I like to have the rest of this strip kind of crimp together and then we want to make sure that our little pink sealing strip on the bag doesn't extend over our gasket area and then we're going to close this once again product forward in the bag get the product in the bag we're going to hit the auto button the bag's inflating that's a good sign Okay, and now we're getting our three seconds of seal time. We got our tacky buzzer. Okay, there we go. We got a bag sealed up with the cereal in it, the product. 
Okay, once again, all inflate is done in the nozzle mode. And one thing to know is that you can also inflate the emboss bags in the nozzle mode. So this is the exception to the rule. Normally in the emboss bags, the texture bags are only in the chamber mode, but if you're inflating them, it has to be in the nozzle mode. All right, I'll give you some of my thoughts on the Magic Seal MS400 vacuum sealer. Now, the utility of this unit is off the charts. So you've got two vacuum pumps, 250 watts of power. You got a 40 centimeter, that's 15.7 inches by eight millimeter wide sealing strip. The ability to use so many different bag types makes this very a very unique vacuum sealer. And also don't forget about the inflation feature that we just talked about. The bill quality is plastic, it's hard plastic, it's adequate. It definitely doesn't blow you away. So, but the plastic body works, but this unit had a metal body then it would be world-class. So once again, the design with the built-in filters, you know, the little plastic boxes on the back that do the liquid recovery for you, that's a game changer because that should greatly extend the life of this unit. Now the cons, the Magic Seal MS400 is indeed quite pricey. There's a few other things that I really don't love and one of those is the locking mechanism for the lid. It takes some effort to get that done. And the procedure for using the liquid catch canister and the vacuum canisters and the air inflation, it could be very confusing if the manual's not handy. Now, you may or may not have noticed in your video, using my label maker, I put some cheat notes on my machine so I have to grab the manual every time that I go to do something with this unit. If you used it every single day, you'd remember all this stuff, but you know, when you go to sleep in between times, well then you might forget it happened to me. So all in all, I think this vacuum sealer is a contender for the most versatile and most functioned vacuum sealer on the market. Now, I hope that you found that this video was useful. So I need you to hit that like button on your way out. Consider subscribing. And I hope to see you next time at Paw Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. Be sure and watch my next video. It's a great barbecue sauce hack. You're gonna love this recipe.